please rise for the national anthem. Good evening, Chennai. A very warm welcome to our chief guest today, our Honorable Minister of Finance, the Government of India, Srimati Nirmala Sitaraman. A warm welcome also to General Abdullah Shamal, Chief of the Army Staff of Maldives. We're fortunate to have you in the city today. The three former Honorable Governors, serving and former Generals of the Indian Army, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. I must take this occasion to also make a special mention and welcome the 120 cadets of the Officer Training Academy present here today, who will soon on commissioning be serving on our nation's borders. I take this opportunity to welcome to Chennai the South Asian Symphony Orchestra led by its brilliant conductor, Alvin Arumagam. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, what we witness here today is an inspirational story. There's a lady amongst us, daughter of a former colonel of the Indian Army, who would go on to join the Indian Foreign Service after topping the Indian Civil Services examination. In an illustrious career spanning over four decades, she would serve as India's only second lady foreign secretary and close a career as the ambassador of the United States of America. It is at this time while in America that she contemplated over the possibility of music bringing people of different cultures together in South Asia in the form of a symphony orchestra. Music, as we all know, preceded language and serves as a tool for people to define ourselves to define themselves and their culture. It allows people to express themselves through performance or even just through listening, from lullabies to funeral music. Performing and listening to music is a great opportunity for people to learn about one another and experience different cultures firsthand. So therefore, with these thoughts in mind, she and her husband, Mr. Sudhakar Rao Ayes, a brilliant bureaucrat and former Chief Secretary of Karnataka, set up the South Asian Symphony Foundation 
and began the search for musicians of South Asia and diaspora to put together the South Asian Symphony Orchestra, which has already in past years enthralled audiences in Mumbai and Bengaluru. It's an honor for all of us in the Radiant Group of Companies to bring this wonderful orchestra to Chennai, believing as we do in citizen diplomacy, and I'm sure they'll leave us delighted and enthralled today. Ladies and gentlemen, let us now put our hands together and welcome on stage the lady behind this monumental endeavor, former ambassador Nirpama Rao. Good evening, Chennai. The Honorable Minister for Finance, Srimati Nirmala Sitaraman, distinguished guests present here today, dear friends, it is my pleasure and honor and my privilege to warmly welcome to this event today the concert of the South Asian Symphony Orchestra, the Honorable Minister of Finance, as our chief guest. Thank you so much, Madam Minister, for so graciously accepting our invitation to grace this occasion. And personally, and as far as the orchestra is concerned, I speak for them too, we see this as an expression of support for what we do as a group. You know, we call our orchestra the South Asian Symphony Orchestra, as you know, short form Sasso or Sasso. And in Hindi, Sasso means breath. And music, in many ways, emanates from breath. It is the first sound, as it were. It, we speak of the music of the spheres, the sound of Om, which is so intrinsic to our faith, to our lives. And ours, therefore, is an orchestra that really mirrors the elements, as it were, nature as it has been created by our maker. And particularly, this, madam, is an orchestra that mirrors our continent, Asia. Today we speak of, of course, South Asia. We speak of the Indo-Pacific, which is very much part of the vocabulary of geopolitics today. So this is an orchestra, I call it not just the South Asian Symphony Orchestra, I call it my Indo-Pacific Orchestra. And we have musicians from all over the world, literally, not just from our region. And um, as has been said, we breach shadow lines that are borders. And I'd like to therefore mention the countries from which our orchestra members come. Starting with India, I'd like the Indian members of the orchestra to please stand. Thank you. We have musicians from our neighboring country, Sri Lanka, separated just by the Pork Strait. I literally say it's a heartbeat away from us. Please welcome our friends from Sri Lanka. Ayobovan. Sri Lanka particularly is going through a difficult time and we share their pain at this moment and we would like a better future to dawn for that country and we are so glad to welcome these young musicians here in our midst. Then we have a sole member from Nepal. We have a musician from Bhutan. And then let me welcome our members from Kazakhstan. From Russia. And then let's cross the ocean and head for Singapore. 
And of course, our conductor, our music director, he's often called Maestro, is Alvin Arumugam, who is from Singapore, of South Asian origin again. He will, of course, join us later. We have musicians from Thailand. And now let's do a little continent crossing and head to the United Kingdom. And then to the United States, our partner in democracy. So as you can see, South Asia extends literally all over the world in many ways. So we have expanded that definition. We've gone beyond ge geopolitics, really. And I think music, as I said, breaches those shadow lines. So we created this orchestra so as to symbolize our worship of peace and the religion of humanity. The light is the same everywhere, as they say. And I'd like to quote from the 13th century Sufi mystic poet Rumi, who said, the light is the same, religions are many, but God is one. The lamps may be different, but the light is the same. It was uh, the German composer Beethoven, whose 250th birth year we celebrated recently, who said, and I speak in German, alle Menschen werden Brüder, meaning all men are brothers. And it was Subramanya Bharati who said, the men and women, our humanity all around the world should learn to love each other and lead exuberant lives, as he said in our love of freedom, freedom without fear. Music, therefore, is a symbol of integration. And our orchestra seeks to build bridges, speak of continuous dialogue. It teaches us through the music, I believe, to float in the world despite the tug of downward currents. And therefore, that leads me to remember Gandhiji's favorite bhajan, Vaishnava Janato. The first lines go, Vaishnava Janato, Tene Kahiye, JP Ruparai Janere. Call only that man a true Vaishnava who is sensitive to the pain of others. And that is also something we seek to always keep in our minds. Our music today, Madam, therefore, embodies that vision. I hope you will enjoy the concert and the joy of being together, all of us, in an act of celebration. Thank you so much, and may I invite you to make your remarks. Thank you. Good evening and uh, namaskar. I'll start with uh, thanking Srimati Nirupoma uh, for having uh, invited me. I readily agreed to it because I didn't want to miss an opportunity to be in a place which will resonate with music. I start with a personal note. Music is a great comforter. I derive a lot of strength from music. And uh, I'm not obsessed with any one particular uh, style or genre. So I'm very biased towards music, in favor of music. So I didn't want to lose this opportunity. But what I see and also what I understand from all that I've read about the work which is going on, is a very out-of-the-box effort in getting young musicians from so many different parts of the world and to be able to present them, particularly at a time I think we all need that element of solace. 
I normally sing the national anthem when it is played or sung. And today I couldn't. Because I thought the, the, the depth with which the violin played it, actually the, the sound was lots more than what the word could convey to me. The national anthem itself, I'm sure to many of us, each time gives that kind of sense of, you know, pride in a different uh, way, not pride as being proud, but it makes you feel so good because the wordings are so very well written. But here, the spoken word was a bit later. The, the heft which was brought in by the wonderful players here made the national anthem literally go through every one of my posts and I couldn't sing. I was very linked with what was played. So if that can happen to a song which all of us can sing unthinkingly, that's the kind of connect you get with music for everything that they play. And it is that which brings in that newer sense of energy, the newer sense of calm which all of us need. And it is for that that music has a very important role to play. And uh, it's, it's an extraordinary effort to get a couple of musicians together and have them be together to play itself requires a great effort. But of course, Chennai, from the days when it was called Madras, has all had that tradition. You know, annually they hold the meat and people from all over the world come and listen to. And that culture has very nicely got woven into the city. But this effort coming from the South Asian uh, Symphony Organization or Foundation is of a different order, but yet has a great message to give, not just by the representation of the people who come from different parts of the world, but they're coming together. They're coming together to give us a feast, what is, like they say in Tamil, it's only when you don't have a feast for the year should you be having a feast for your mouth. So that is only, you, this is the first feast we should all have. And in the absence of it, you can always go and have a meal here or there. When uh, Nirupamaji spoke, she said about Rumi and also spoke about Bharatiyar and so many others. There are two things which I'll just very quickly come in to say and with that I'll end my remarks. When you have people talk about words, literature, writing, again, this human awareness takes you to that time when there were no words. And that was represented by some people who say, I lisped and then came the words. I lisped and then came the word. So the first one was not a word, it was a certain sound. And in a way, that is what in our traditions we are taught, you may say that it is a classical mold of learning, but what is told is there's just that one Lord above us who's dispassionate, who doesn't have qualities, he's just indifferent, but he's the maker, he's the doer, he's the one with all the power. And of course, we call him Brahmam. He doesn't have a form, no shape, no nothing about it. He's indifferent, but all this happens before him. It happens around him. But there's just one thing which immediately gets associated with him, and that is Nada. That is why they say Nada Brahma, Shabda Brahma. It is that original which comes in the form of music and therefore even the most indifferent individual, uh, individual <clears throat> who probably less expresses his sensitivities. No individual can be without it, but probably less expresses his sensitivities also gets moved by music. And Therefore, music in any form, particularly with so many artists, 
is bound to touch your chords. I wished I could spend the rest of the evening listening to it, but of course, because of other commitments, I'm going off after some time. But I appreciate the great effort that you've put in getting all this together and also taking it from one place to another, showcasing what that little connect with that Brahman can do to each one of us. So all appreciation and also grateful that you've given me an opportunity to be here for a short while, albeit. But I'm sure Chennai is bound to enjoy. I'm sure this message will, across the world, take that important message, I think, that we need to calm down sometimes, sit down, and just allow us to be carried by the waves of music, which is what you've offered us today. So thank you very much for this. Thank you.